What's up? I'm Vin, and today I want to go through the 2021 AP Calculus BC free response question number five. So let's get started. And for part A, we're writing a second degree Taylor polynomial for f about x equals one, and we're going to use that to approximate f of two. So the first thing we have to know here is the formula for a second degree polynomial where we're centered at x equals one. So this is just going to be f of one plus we'd have f prime of one times x minus 1. I could write to the first power over 1 factorial, but that's not going to change anything, so we'll just leave this alone. And we got f double prime of 1 times x minus 1 squared over 2 factorial. So then all we have to do here is just make use of the given information. So we have t2 of x, or I should say t sub 2 of x equals f of 1 is equal to 4, plus f prime of 1 we're going to have to go on a side quest for to get. But just know this piece here, f double prime of 1, they told us, is equal to 4. So we have 4 times x minus 1 squared over 2 factorial is just 2 times 1. And if I want to know what is f prime of 1, this comes from the first derivative, which they have here as dy dx. So we just have to evaluate this first derivative at the point 1, 4, and that's going to tell us what f prime of 1 is. So we plug 1, 4 into the derivative, we're going to have 4 times x ln x becomes 1 natural log of 1, and natural log of 1 is 0. So this whole value here is just equal to 0. So we'd have 0 times x minus 1. So this middle piece wipes out completely. So our second degree Taylor polynomial is going to be 4 plus, and then 4 divided by 2 is just 2. So we'll just have 4 plus 2 times x minus 1 squared. But we have to be careful. We're not going to stop here. Remember, we have to approximate f of 2. So then the last thing to do here is just say f of 2 is roughly equal to the second degree Taylor polynomial evaluated at 2, which is going to give us 4 plus 2 times, and we have 2 minus 1 squared. So this is just going to give us 4 plus 2. So the approximation is equal to 6. For part B, we're using Euler's method, and we're starting at x equals 1. We're using two steps of equal size to also approximate f of 2. So for this question here, we're starting at x equals 1. So what I'd like to do for these kind of questions is just make a table. So I have x equals 1, and I'm approximating f of 2. So that means I'm going from 1 to 2 using two steps of equal size. So if I have to go from 1 to 2 by taking two equal steps, that means I'm counting by a half. So the middle value here would be 1.5. And my starting point here is that y is equal to 4 when x is equal to 1. And what I like to do is, once again, I make a table, but I include x, y, and the derivative. And remember what we said before, that dy dx at 1, 4 was equal to 0. So this tells us then how to write our equation of a tangent line. And just know, in general, when you're writing the equation of a tangent line, it's y equals the slope, and we have x minus x1 plus y1. And x, y, x1, y1 represent the point, and the slope comes from the derivative. So our first tangent line is just going to be y equals, and if I have a slope of 0, this whole piece wipes out. So the line is just going to be y equals 4. Okay, once again, when you have a zero slope, that means that your line is in the form of y equals a constant. So it's just equal to the, to the y coordinate here. So that means that if we were trying to say what is the y value when x equals 1.5 on this line, it would just be y equals 4. And then we just run it through the process again. So now what we do is we plug the point 1.54 into our derivative to find our new slope. So what we have here is we have dy dx evaluated at 1.5 comma 4 and we have 4 times x ln x so we're going to have 1.5 times natural log of 1.5 so from here we could just multiply 4 times 1 and a half is 6 so we have 6 natural log of 1.5 and that represents our new slope so then what we do here is we're writing the equation of a line using this point and this slope so we'll change colors here so that tells us our line is going to be y equals, our slope is 6 natural log of 1.5, and we're multiplying by x minus, the x coordinate is 1.5, and then we have plus, the y value is 4. So then here, the last thing to do is we just plug in x equals 2. So I could say here y of 2 is equal to 6 natural log of 1.5, and be careful, this is natural log of 1.5. I'm not going to be able to multiply 1.5 by whatever's left here. So we have x equals 2, so I have 2 minus 1.5 is 0.5 plus 4. But once again, this 1.5 is attached to the natural log function, so I can't multiply these two numbers, but I can do 6 times 0.5, which is 3. 
So I have 3 natural log of 1.5 plus 4. So the goal here, once again, was to approximate f of 2. So this here, the tangent line value at 2 is telling us an approximation, f of 2 is roughly equal to 3 natural log of 1.5 plus 4. For the last part of this question, we're solving this differential equation here with the following initial condition. And the first step to these questions on the AP test is usually to separate variables. That's usually the first point that you're going to get for a question like this. So you just have to do a bit of algebra. So we can multiply both sides by dx. And then we could also divide both sides by y to get the dy and the y term together and to get the x and dx terms together. So we could just do this algebra all at once. And notice here, dx over dx cancels, and then we have y over y canceling out. So if we write out our new equation, we're going to have dy over y equals x ln x dx. So this usually gets you one point just doing that algebra. To get your next set of points here, you have to know how to do the antiderivatives. Now, the first part of this antiderivative should be okay. That's just natural log absolute value of y. But the, for the second part here, you have to know a little bit more. We have to use integration by parts. So there's a helpful little mnemonic. Um, I wouldn't actually write this out. I mean, you're not going to lose points if you do write it, but it's just helpful to know. It tells you what to make your u-term. So notice I have a log function, and a log function ranks first. So I automatically know that u is going to be equal to natural log x. And the x stands for the algebraic, which I'll just abbreviate like this. I stands for inverse trig. So we have inverse trig function. And then this stands for trig function, and this stands for an exponential function. So once again, because we have an algebraic and a log function, the log outranks the algebraic. So u is natural log x. And then dv is the leftovers x dx. So then we have to calculate du is 1 over x dx. And then v is the antiderivative, which is 1 half x squared. And we leave the plus c out. We write it at the very, very end. So now we just apply the formula for integration by parts. We have u times v is 1 half x squared natural log x minus the integral of v times du. The 1 half I'm just going to write in front like this. But then I'm multiplying x squared times 1 over x is x. And then the dx just tags along like this. So now to close this out, we'll change colors here. We're going to have natural log absolute value of y equals 1 half x squared natural log x. And then the antiderivative of x is 1 half x squared. So when I multiply 1 half x squared by negative 1 half, that's going to give us negative 1 fourth x squared. And now I attach the plus c. So at this point here, we have to solve for the value of c. And we're using this initial condition here that f of 1 is equal to 4. So what that tells us then, we're going to have natural log. So we'll just clean that up a little bit. We have natural log of absolute value of 4, because once again, we're using y is equal to 4, is equal to 1 half, 1 squared natural log of 1, minus 1 fourth of 1 squared plus c. Now, conveniently, the natural log of 1 is 0, so this cancels out. And the absolute value of 4 is positive 4. So notice here, the absolute value of 4 is just 4. That's going to play a part into how we do the algebra at the end. So we have natural log of 4 equals negative 1 fourth plus c. So this tells us the value of c is equal to natural log 4 plus a fourth. So then what we have to do from here is we have to plug the value of c back into the general solution. So the general solution is in this line here. So we're going to take this. We have natural log. And a little side note here. Because y is equal to 4 and 4 is greater than 0, this is a really important idea. Since y is equal to 4 and 4 is greater than 0, that tells us the absolute value of y for this question is going to be equal to y. So I could just say natural log of y is equal to, we have 1 half x squared natural log x minus 1 fourth x squared plus c. But now I could replace c with natural log 4 plus a fourth. So then the last bit of math we have to do here, we'll just make this a little neater. So what we're going to do is to solve for y, we just need to exponentiate both sides. So we're going to make both sides powers of e, and then e and natural log will cancel out. And we have y equals e to this entire mess here. We have 1 half x squared natural log x minus 1 fourth x squared plus natural log 4 plus a fourth. All right. I don't recommend doing any more algebra from here because on the AP test, 
You don't get extra points for simplifying. You could stop here. Unless they say simplify and get rid of this natural log piece, you don't have to. So this is sufficient. Okay, well, this is going to conclude the video on AP Calculus BC 2021 free response question number five. If this video was helpful, please like and subscribe. It really helps me grow the channel. And if you got any requests, just leave the topics you want me to cover in the comment section below. And thanks for watching.